fried bacon. You came bacon. home just bacon grease all mm-hmm. over you. Yeah. Bacon cologne, eh? Yeah. Exactly. That's what you're looking for. It was Aphrodisia. Very, very <laughs> we all sexy. Like bacon, right? Almost exactly 11 years ago. Yeah, so when you right, left exactly. your job to I do this. I quit Deloitte 11 years ago. Okay, yeah, it wasn't just it wasn't any just, quit your it job It wasn't just story. any quit your job story. Taylor, we were on our honeymoon in Grenada in the Caribbean, which is not typically known for its cheese selection. And we're sitting on the beach. I could beach. have gone into nutmeg, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that hot sun on my face and the warm sand between my toes. And I just thought, man, I've made really good life choices. And meanwhile, John... I'm going through sort of this major <laughs> early life crisis. We just had an amazing wedding. We, the honeymoon was off to an incredible start. We have an amazing house here in Austin. And the only thing in my life that wasn't 111% was my job. And so I leaned over to Kendall and said, I think I'm going to quit when I get home. <laughs> yeah. At this point, I joke I could still enroll. No. So I'm a, I was a CPA. When you go to a party and you're like, hey, I'm an accountant. The conversation kind of dies. dies out. <laughs> Sorry, accountant. Yeah, but if accounting is what you love, that's one thing. But it wasn't where it your wasn't heart where was. was. So what does Kendall say to so you when I, you look at her? I said, what do you want to do? And I said something in cheese. And so I'm not exactly sure where that came from. I do remember him saying that nobody likes an accountant, but everybody loves cheese. I just want to make people happy. We felt young and in love and on cloud nine, and it didn't matter. Like, the world was our oyster. Yeah. and. We, we didn't have the, all the commitments we do now, and if we were ever going to go for it, we're going to go for it. We spent the rest of the honeymoon talking about what it meant. So we got on the same page, and by the end of the trip, we discussed and agreed that I'd get two years from the day I quit to open up a business and spend about the same amount of money as the debt would be for an MBA program. And so it was two years and five days after that I quit, and we would have made it if it hadn't been for the plumbing inspection. With his ability to crunch the numbers and my ability to basically work for free, surely we could start our own business, yes. right? Yes. That's the right formula. It's been awesome. And now the business has been open nine years. Nine years. We just celebrated our ninth and anniversary. We're sitting in our 10 year plan. This was our 10 year vision was to buy this house and, and turn it into a cheese house. And we got it in year two. We got two. it in year two. 18 How months incredible. into the business and uh, I can't believe that we've been so blessed. First thing was uh, I got an internship at Kirby Lane Cafe. Um, the you just wanted to eat lots of queso. Mm, that's so good. If you ever get a chance to eat the queso with their dinner rolls at like two in the morning. I mean, I went to UT, so I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty skilled in that <laughs> department. Uh-huh. And I still, to this day, rely on those experiences when making decisions in our business. It's mm-hmm. amazing what I got to learn. We did a grilled cheese club out of our house. We ran a ha- club out of our house where random people we didn't know showed up just to eat five different courses of grilled cheese. Yeah. And we went and interned in France with Hervé Mons yeah, and worked well, in cheese caves. And Did you say cheese cave? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, I got to go in. Or cove, if you will. It started as just a trip that we were going to take and I, I would go see like two farms. My contact was like, no, you should just go and work here an intern is a world-renowned affineur, which is a cheese ager, and they've got caves in the central part of France. They had about 250 different varieties of cheese and hundreds of wheels of each, and so the job was just, you know, taking care of them. They're all little, like, babies, and each wheel's different and needs different attention, and I got to learn some really amazing skills. Yeah, people don't like, realize in the process of affinage or cheese maturation or aging, that it, that cheese is being flipped every day or once a week or then once a month. But it was when we were in Europe, um, and it really was then connecting to the products and cheese, not only because cheese is yummy and everybody loves it, yeah. but also that the true labor of love and the producers behind them and the makers behind them. And I grew up um, showing sheep in 4-H. My parents are cattle ranchers in North Texas mm-hmm. and they still ranch to this day. And so I could really speak to that rural lifestyle as well and knew that it was a lot of work and we didn't want to do it because people say, why don't you make your own cheese? And we're like, are you kidding? That's tough work. Mm -hmm. Um, Not that running your own business has a big job. (laughs) And we realized like Austin doesn't have a cut to order cheese shops and we were the first to open. And we thought, hey, we can put together everything we love, which is being together every single day, talk about the producers and the stories, eat and keep exploring new bites and then support a really good mission to do good, eat good, and support all these artisanal farmers making real good food. 
you got to come start your little cheese shop right there on Duval Road. Mm -hmm. And so how did the community respond when you opened? First of all, you Duval realize how much Street, you don't uh, know. Duval Street, I've had, we've had a lot of customers Did you just go Austin like, school me? No. She's like, scoot over road, it is straight here. It's, <laughs> we get a lot of people, people going to Duval Road right. off, yeah. off 183. You're and, so um, right, I've and, done the same thing. Exactly, mm -hmm. and, and that breaks my heart when I can't give them a taste of honey. And we opened the doors, the shop, and I just remember being so anxious and nervous, like we're frauds, we don't have culinary degrees, what are we doing? And we just reminded ourselves it was all an adventure. Mm -hmm. We had ride it for what it was. It would, if we had to close, we'd close, but at least we knew we'd tried it. Yes. As long as we were authentic and real. And that's why we ended up being Antonelli's Cheese Shop and not some cutesy name. There are all these great cheese shop names like Pastoral and Formagination. And we tried <laughs> them, them on and they didn't fit us. We were like, you know what? We're just Antonelli's Cheese Shop. Granted, when people first walked in and saw us and we looked a lot younger, I think they thought we were brother and sister and they're like, where's the Antonelli's? Like we're it's really like hearts. an older couple in the back or something. <laughs> We don't get that anymore. Most businesses don't succeed past the first year or two, right? And so we've been fortunate every year. I think it's a blessing that we get to unlock the door and <laughs> keep, keep doing it, keep trying new things. We just saw ourselves, mom and pop shop, day in and day out, cutting the cheese. And so now we don't have a goal to grow. I know, gosh, Taylor, hold your eyes at me. Um, we are professional we cheese cutters. Before, yes. But we never intended to grow just for growth sake. And instead now we want to grow because it means we can take better care of our team. We can pay better wages. We can sell more cheese to better support our producers. The more revenue we have, the more we can give back to our community.